Folks, welcome back to a very special episode of CCL Sports Cards, where today we're going to interview Wyatt Zawadzki. He's a collector and an investor in the hobby. And what makes Wyatt very special to me personally and why I'm having him on the show is he was in the first, say, 25 subscribers to the channel when I launched 18 months ago. But I've brought Wyatt on today, so all of you can hear from him. By now, you guys have kind of figured out what my approach is to sports cards, or what our approach, I should say, to sports cards and making money in the hobby is. But I wanted to bring Wyatt on because he has a very, very different approach. And I brought him on so I could learn from him, so you could learn from him. Maybe there's something he does that will appeal to you. But what jumped out at me the most during our interview was Wyatt's honesty. Because I will say, when I was his age, I was not honest about my mistakes. In fact, oftentimes, I just lie about them. And I can say that not owning my mistakes probably held me back from success when I was a lot younger. I really enjoyed hearing from Wyatt and hearing his take on the hobby and his approach. Hope you enjoy this episode. Just keep that tape rolling. Folks, welcome back to CCL Sports Cards. It is my absolute pleasure to have with me on the show today. I'll call him my friend. I mean, his name is Wyatt Zawadzki. He's been a fan of CCL Sports Cards since the early days. I probably had 50 or 60 subscribers really early. And now being close to 800, it's really my pleasure to bring him on the show. He's a collector of sports cards. He's also a, an investor. He has a bit of a different strategy, which is what I actually want to share with you viewers today, because you guys, by now, you pretty much know what my strategy is at CCL Sports Cards. But I, I do like to bring a different flavor because I do believe there are many, many different ways to make money in sports cards. And, you know, my style is predominantly baseball. I do a little bit of hockey, but I know that Wyatt's into football. So with that, I'm going to bring Wyatt to the show. Wyatt, how you doing, brother? What's up, guys? It was, it was awesome watching the intro, like, live. I haven't seen that before, which is, it's like, you know you're in it. You, like, you know you're on the show when that happens, eh? It's cool? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, I mean, the intro pretty much stays consistent, but you know you're on the show when the intro happens. Um, so tell us a little about, about yourself. Um, why, how did you get, like, how old are you? I know that you go to school. I know you play football, but, but how did you get into the hobby specifically? I mean, just to start off, I'm 15 years old and going into my sophomore year, but like, I feel like everyone gets into the hobby in like a, like a pretty uniform way. They usually either play sports or have a connection to sports. So for me, it was when I was playing Little League Baseball, my dad was coaching. And, like, if you made a good play and we were, like, six years old, you got a baseball card. And then at the end of the season, he bought, like, a box of baseball cards. And, like, everyone got a pack. I'm like, holy crap, this is really cool. And then it just – from there, it just started going. I mean, I used to go to Target, like, once every month and buy, like, a 20-hour blaster box. And I was like, that was probably my favorite day of the month. And then I started slowly progressing and progressing from there. I love that. So you said you were six, about six. Is that what I caught? You were about six years old. Your dad was your little six league coach around there. Yeah, yes, six or seven. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool. And so you're so as a reward or like if you played well, you said you would get like a card or a pack of cards. Yeah. I mean, it's, say if you made like if you're at shortstop and made a good play, like you get a pack of cards. That Like the bar for that wasn't very high. So a lot of people got some cards. Like if you made throw to first, year. like if you were yeah. six years old, and you made a throw to first. I mean, that, that's pretty spectacular when you're yeah. six years old. So I've never really asked you this before. And I'll just segue a little bit. So, you know, that was like opening packs. Do you rip a lot of wax? Because personally, I don't. Not anymore. It's just, I mean, it's it's like addiction. So, like, if I go and grab a pack of cards, like, I I have to go back tomorrow and get another one. So I've been staying away from ripping since, like, for, like, two years now. Oh, oh wow. I, yeah, personally, obviously, you know, I don't rip a lot of wax personally. Yeah. Um, I, I think that for me, and the reason I ask that is because when you were – you know, younger, when I was younger, I loved ripping wax. Like it was my favorite, yeah. uh, but not anymore. So I've kind of moved away from that. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of been how I did it too. So, yeah. And so you're fit. You said you're 15 now. So yeah. have you been in the hobby the entire time? I know that your style has probably evolved over time and we'll get into that. But you've been in it since you were six or? I mean, it's been off and on. Like there's been sets that like 2015 tops has been great 2017 tops chrome has been great but outside of that like outside of those two years it's been on and off since then and then i got back in in 2021 when it was super hot 
like like a lot of us. I mean, I think I got back in 2020, but I mean, it was when I got back into 2020 with the beginning of COVID, things were just crazy. I'm like, oh my was, God. Yeah, it was different. There's like so much money to be made. I mean, like I, feel, I felt like I was missing out. And there were some lessons for me that came along with that. Um, yeah. But um, so I, I remember you saying maybe, maybe a few months ago when we were chatting, you said you'd taken a little bit of a break. So you're saying basically you had some breaks mixed in over time. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just when I get busy, I like, kind of put it off to the side, but still look around in it. it it's pretty amazing because from my perspective, we chat like maybe once a week. You know, I know you were at the National. Uh, I don't think I'm mistaken there. Like you were at the National. Um, yeah, I was at the National. It, it seems to me like you're still out there buying and selling and trading. Like it's sort of, you know, like you take a break, but you to me, it seems like you're still super active. Maybe you're just really effective. That's pretty kind. I wouldn't say I'm super effective. But I feel like if, if you can get into stuff at a decent price and make connections with people, it really helps out. I mean, at the National, like, since I go to, like, a lot of shows around my area, the most of the deals I did was people that set up that are from my area, which really helped out. Well, I think that, especially with me, and I'll relate this to CCL Sports Cards, I think what you're yeah. saying is it's far easier to do business with people you know, like, and trust. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah, some of my best deals are those ones. Okay, so why? You've been a collector off and an investor, let's say, on and off for the last few years. So what are the top five? You're, this is what the show is. I want it to be about. Obviously, we're going to learn about your investing strategy. But let's, I mean, the hobby yeah. is about collecting too. So what are your top five favorite cards you've got right now and why? I mean, I'll put it out of order since it's like really hard to like play somewhere because we, we love a lot of things. I mean, Tyler, my Tyler Soderstrom... To, um first bowman tops um first bowman one of my favorites i love the gold refractor and it's like a team color and it's like really special to me even though i got absolutely killed on the deal i i still love the card it's probably one that will stay with me for a while because i'm a big tyler soderstrom fan and ace fan sadly i also like i got two jalen hurts cards at the national i really like one's a cracked ice which is from contenders which is like a pretty sought after card and then i got an nt NT true of Jalen Hurts. I think it's a BGS 8.5. But those are like two, like one of Jalen Hurts' flagship cards. I think I'll have a good year and just love the look of the cards. And then another one that, another two cards, and probably here for the final, to wrap out the final two spots, are this Trey Lance Gold Kaboom PSA 10. And like as a Niners fan, it just special and got it like right on release day. So it's like, and it gems. So like there's plenty of things going for it. I should have let it go last year. Because I would I would have been so sitting so good on that card, but it was like too emotional to let go. And then my last card is um, gold um, gold downtown of Trey Lance in a PSA nine. And it's I just feel like so I've seen that one on your Instagram. I feel like I've seen the downtown. That's the one with like the bridges, right? Like it has like the like the, yeah. the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. That's a beautiful card. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I mean. The gold, the gold color match with the Niners uniform with the Niners helmet just sick. And also, too, it's just, like, for me, it's an iconic card being, like, a kid from the San Francisco area. It's just, like, I don't know. It just resonates with me, I guess. Yeah. I mean, for those who don't know, I know that you're a West Coaster. I know from, like, you know, the A's and our talks about minor league ball with one of my all-time worst investments ever in Robert Pawson. I mean, worst. I mean, that guy has just been terrible. And we've all got these, like, yeah. you joke that you got killed on the Tyler Soderstrom gold. I mean... I'll give you a list of cards yeah. off the top of my head I've gotten killed on. But because we're doing a little bit of learning here for, for the viewers, um, if you don't know, you know, Tyler Soderstrom, he just got called up by the A's. Um, and he's 21 years old, like we talked about. But then you talked about Jalen Hurts. So who is Jalen Hurts and why do you like him? Uh, he's the quarterback for the Eagles. I mean, being an Irish fan, I'm a little salty because Jalen Hurts and the Eagles knocked us out last year in the playoffs. Love but that. I really, I really like Jalen Hurts because his prices compared to like guys like Justin Herbert, who's like the top guy of that class. He's like half of Justin Herbert, and mm. he has a hundred percent more of the success in the playoffs and just as a team than Justin Herbert. So I don't get why he's half of Justin Herbert. That's basically been my main thesis on him. So Jalen Hurts is the starting QB for the, the Eagles right now. Yes. And then Trey Lance, you said he plays for the Niners. Is he their starting QB too? I Again, I, I've heard the names, but yeah. I, I figure they're the QBs. But for, because it's a baseball card show, I want to make sure the viewers know who we're talking about. Yeah, okay. Trey Lance is probably back in quarterback for the Niners right now. He got picked 
third overall, the Niners traded a bunch of draft picks for him. They didn't start him the first year. Yeah, they didn't start him the first year. They started him his second year in the NFL and got hurt game two. And then they they drafted a guy that was the last pick in the draft, and he just went ballistic last year. So it looks like they're going to start him. So, like, is there hope for Trey Lance? Probably not. But if he gets traded, you never know. That's the thing about football cards. I mean, like I told, I shared with you a little bit before we got rolling. Like I used to really be yeah. into watching football, but it seems to me like football, it, it's so volatile. I, I mean, it doesn't speak to who I am, but I think there is money to be made there. You just have to be really good yeah. and, and nimble. I can think of a deal that came up yeah. on your Instagram last week where I feel like you picked it up and it was gone. Like maybe within a couple of days, I can't remember what card it was, but I remember something like this. Yeah. So as a national, I did like a cat. I did like a cash trade deal for like a Jalen Hurts BGS nine, NT, and then I moved it for like. I, and then I got the cash from another Jalen Hurts card, and then I moved it for like a Jalen Hurts cracked ice PSA ten. So I kind of like upgraded and downgraded at the same time. But like mm. with, I think with those really high end cards, I don't really care what the grades in. If you just go at a good price, you should be fine. Yeah, and I know with football, the, the little bit I know about football cards, the, the bigger names, it's always Q, It always seems to be QBs that I'm seeing people talk about, yeah. whether it's contenders. And this is very limited knowledge. I'm just going by what I see on Instagram personally. Um, so let's um, let's, let's circle back to uh, to baseball, if that's okay with you. Um, sure. So as it relates to baseball, and I've talked about this on the show. There, I mean, I don't. There's a few select names, and I called them out. But other, we've seen a pretty dramatic slide in the price of yeah, baseball if, prospects. Yeah. I mean, if you're not named Shohei or Ellie Dela Cruz, your That's cards are just in the dirt. Um, like, we'll take, so you, let's, let's talk about it this way, because I know we can talk about this slide, but I want to put it in context for people, not through my eye. So the Soders from Gold, if we can talk about that. Yeah. What was your cost, and what would you value that at today? Because Soderstrom was, he's been a big deal for probably, I mean, I, I think he's been a big deal for probably two years, because... You used to his base autos and PSA ten were as high as three hundred bucks at one point, four hundred bucks. Yeah, consistently too. And now they're yes. like maybe maybe you can pay eighty bucks and get one. Like it's not yeah. like impossible to pick up. On the gold to like on the gold exactly, I did like I think it was like a thirty five hundred trade. So like I was in it for not a great price, but I was comfortable where it's at, and it was like. At like beginning of the MLIB twenty twenty two season, so like I had hope, and he did play well that season. Like his stats were like he was around eight fifty OPS and progressed three levels. So it's like that card should go up, but it's just been on a downward like because of baseball and like how the prospecting games he's had are so strong right now. Mm. Now, did you? I don't. If I missed it, I apologize. Did you share the cost? Uh, what it cost you to, or did you get that in a pack, or did I miss that? Um, you missed it. It was thirty five hundred trades. Thirty five hundred. And what would you say, like, like a thousand today? Like, a, like, a, like, is it would be a grand? I mean, probably 800? a thousand. Um, uh, orange PSA ten to twenty three hundred, so it's probably like mm. eleven hundred. Like yeah, like a grand, twelve hundred, somewhere in there. Um, yeah. and that's a guy who's actually made it to the show, and he's twenty one years old. And you know, I yeah. know people don't like this comparison, but if we were talking even eighteen months ago, it'd be we'd be having a completely different conversation because. That is a quick yeah. rise. 21 is a – that's a great age to be in Major League Baseball. Yeah, and the age were super aggressive with him. I think the franchise that he's in right now really doesn't help him because the A's just have no collect collectability. But you still think you would see a bit of rise. But his prices have been really weird. Since he got injured, like, in 2021 in low A, that's when he was at his peak, and now he's in the show, and he's, like, probably one-eighth of the value, so – it's a little disappointing, but like, if you still believe in the guy, it's probably decent to get on right now. Eighty dollars for a PSA ten. I mean, for a guy who's twenty one, I, I think he's somebody. I still have some Sodi cards, and I think it's something you can look yeah. at in the off season because he is so young and he has succeeded. And I always say they have to have some success. Like, I'm not a big guy, and we talk about my investing strategy, but I'm not a guy who buys a guy who's never had success. Other than Robert Pawson, yeah. that was an, that was a rookie mistake. <laughs> Um, I mean, we I'll all, we all Pawson. have, we, for me, the Robert Pawson is the Pedro Pineda for me. Like, He's playing better. Really, I'm glad you mentioned him. He's playing better. Crazy. 
I still don't have any hope. It's not like even if he plays better, the trade's still out on him. His prices are not going to do anything. No, I, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I don't think so either. But I, I was happy to see him playing better because it seems like Oakland. A lot of their international signees, they just they haven't translated very well. So in talking about you know losing value, and I actually have an episode coming up about what I've, I actually have yeah. made money on. But I share that you know I have two hundred dollars slabs. I sell for twenty five dollars. I got to take the loss. Um, yeah. So if it's okay, would you be able to share with us and the viewers? And the reason I say this is I don't want viewers to feel like they're alone. Like we're all losing money at points. Yeah. What would you say over the last year is the card you've taken the biggest realized hit on, if that's okay? Realize, I mean, the realized you mean by buying and selling it, not like... Yeah, you bought it at a certain point. And then, yeah, I mean, you can hold on to it. I mean, have you, is there anything you've sold where you're like, you know, I just lost two grand, that's life. Hey, man. My biggest loss is for sure my Zach Wilson. So I, I was... Uh, Zach Wilson got injured, like, last preseason. And then his prices were a little down, but I still believed in him. He came back, had like one solid game, like crap, I better get a Zach Wilson before he explodes with his mm. always a way to lose money instantly. Like there's nothing worse than FOMO with money with in cards, right? If you have FOMO, you're going to lose instantly. It's good. You, so just so viewers know, who is Zach Wilson? I'm assuming he's a quarterback. Yeah, Zach Wilson is a quarterback for the Jets. And now he's the second string, but he started last year and was like a really high draft pick. You know, it's amazing to me why you're mentioning something like FOMO because that's something I honestly didn't learn about until I was into my, well into my 20s as an investor. FOMO, I'm, yep. I'm glad you share that with viewers too. So explain what FOMO is again, for people that don't know what FOMO is because it's emotion. FOMO is emotion. Yeah, it's pure emotion. It's just like the fear that you're missing out on something that's about to pop. Yeah, and you're saying this is what costs you the money with Zach Wilson because you said he had a good yeah. game. And you're like, okay, I better get some Zach Wilson. I've been there too, brother. Like, I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I don't do it anymore when I can keep my emotions in check. I'm not perfect because I still like, oh my God, I'm going to miss the yeah. boat on this guy. Um, and so what was, so you sold the card, I assume, or sold the card you bought. Yeah. Okay. So it was like a Zach Wilson PSA 9 NT. It was like a beautiful three color patch. I got it in October for 10K. I probably sold it for like 800 bucks at last national. It was just mm. brutal. That sounds painful. So you said 10. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. That's really honest. Well, and I gotta, I gotta commend you, man. A lot of people, they probably wouldn't own those kind of things. I appreciate that. So 10 K you sold for 800. Yeah. I mean, that's just death by FOMO. If that's a good example of it, I feel like. But it sounds like you, to me, it sounds like you learned your, you learned a valuable lesson. Yeah. Just don't go big on guys that only have one good game. That's probably the biggest lesson. <laughs> mm. I love that. Just and again, just identifying the FOMO piece because I I find and I'm obviously a little bit older, but I find that if you can identify yeah. that you're 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 thinking with your emotions, you, it's sometimes easier to take a step back. And I, oh, I've seen this before. Um, I, I feel like I'm going to get hurt here if I do this. Um, so it's definitely sobering. Yeah. I'm no, glad you shared that one. That's awesome. So um, yeah. I do want to ask, so clearly you and I, like you've watched the show for a, a couple of years now. Good bit, yeah. And, and we could we could agree, because we've had chats offline, we could agree that our investing strategies are somewhat different. Yeah, no doubt. Now, yeah, so what would you say is the biggest difference? Like, how would you classify yourself as a, like a speculator investor in sports cards as it compares to me, if, if that helps? I mean... From my view of what how you invest and how I invest, I'm definitely a lot more speculative than you and take, I would say, bigger risk on guys. Just you're 15. You I, should, if I say this in judgment. I mean, to cut yeah. you off, you're 15. You should be taking risks, man. That's why I want to share it with viewers. Let her fly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I buy, I mean, what I really got hurt on recently is I buy guys like, I call the strategy kind of hyper prospecting is that if they play like, they have one or two good weeks in April. Maybe you could get a mid-season pop in June when they get like promoted. And my biggest example, like, of trying to like install the strategy into my prospecting strategy is Cole Young, who's a prospect for the Mariners. So I bought Cole like, Young. yeah, Cole Young. He's a he's probably I don't know where he's at on the top one hundred now, but he's around there. So, and I think why I thought Cole Young was such a good example of this is because there's at that point back in like april there was none of his stuff out there because he was like 
a SP redemption guy. So I picked up like three blues and like a gold. I'm like, this is gonna be, be good because if I hold it as a redemption, maybe in May or June when he doesn't sign it till after the season, these will be worth a lot because there's just none on the market. So I was probably in for that lot for like maybe fourteen hundred bucks. So I felt pretty comfortable mm-hmm. where I was. Mm-hmm. He had two bad weeks. Uh, his prices have just never recovered. But he got promoted to high. He's like, I think he's been in high for like three weeks with like eleven hundred OPS, and then his live autos came out, which also screwed me on the thesis, but. I mean, we lose them. And you call it like hyper prospecting, and it's basically speculation on them having like a good start to the season. Like, I can point to one of my favorite guys who's like that, Maximo Acosta. Yeah. He had a crazy good start to his season, yeah. and he's just kind of gone downhill since then. I wouldn't say he's had yeah. a terrible season, but um, it, it hasn't really panned out. How old's Cole Young? He either, I think, 20. He's either mm. 19 or 20. I don't think he's older than 20 right now. Mm. And so with this strategy, with I would what I was what you call hyper, I call it faster money. Like because you're looking at more of a yeah. shorter term view to make. I call it faster, um, faster money. So have you got an example of somewhere recently where you've actually made money the quick way? I mean, I would say last year with Jordan Lawler. I mean, like I sold a gold. That's right. Of Jordan- you, sorry, I'm going to cut you off, and it, I'll let you. You bought the yeah. gold at the national. I remember this. Yeah, mm. that was last year. I think I got it for ten k and moved it for like eleven five or something, and that was like within four weeks. So it's like I feel like if you can just keep money flowing, which has been harder and harder to do like recently, mm-hmm. I think you turn out a lot better. I mean, that's how me and you differ a lot because you love to hold on to the guys, which just different but both their strategies sometimes work and sometimes don't i think that's a fair statement because my strategy doesn't always work either i mean you know i tend to have a little bit of a longer term perspective um that that being said i'm I'm looking at things that are a little maybe a little more liquid these days where because the i mean i don't care who you are i really feel as though you know liquidity has dried up a little bit in the hobby um especially in baseball too which is, again, why I talk about I think it's a great place to be because nobody else wants to be at this party right now. That's my own personal bias. Um, yeah. If you take a longer-term view. Yeah. I mean, it's like if you buy like the Mike Trout's Bowman Chrome Autos or like I think even Ronald Cunha or Juan Soto reached that tier where it's like he's probably investable for the next 15 years easily. I know if you agree yeah. on the Juan Soto and Ronald Acuna take, but at least Mike Trout is. I mean. Well, at least Juan Soto can stay healthy. I love Acuna. I love what he does for the sport. I, I I think it his cards have gotten more. He's such an electric player. I mean, if you extrapolate his figures over eight years, if he can stay healthy, he's got crazy numbers. His second year, he almost went forty forty, which is just insane. Like as a, I think he was twenty at the time. It's like no one really does that, especially at twenty years old. Yeah, I'm more of a trout yeah. guy these days just because I look at things so through again through a, a little bit of a longer term lens. I don't want to get too yeah. much into my investing stocks. Anybody who watches the show knows what I do, but I, I know that in 10 years, chances, I mean, chances are like a Mookie Betts is probably gonna be worth more than he is today because there'll be less of him. But I, I do want to talk a little bit more about your strategy before we wrap up. So is there anybody yeah. um or what what sport would you say or what like what sports card are you investing in right now what's your favorite thing to buy right now that you feel like it's going to be a good win for you wyatt i feel like jalen hurts might be a nice little win i've been starting to like slowly buy desmond ritter who's another football guy which i feel like he will do great this year his situation is just awesome and that's really what i look for in quarterbacks right now i mean on the baseball side i've been a little more quiet just because i really have no clue how this market looks in three months and i think if it does do anything, we'll go down more with just like it's starting to baseball season starting to wrap up a little more. So I'll probably get back into baseball maybe in three months, but it's just like I I haven't been keeping that close to the eye. I do love Gabriel Gonzalez though, who's another prospect for the Mariners. So Gabriel Gonzalez, you said I said you know you said Jalen Hurts, and then it was Desmond Ritter. He's a football player, like a quarterback. You said, yeah, a quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. For the Falcons, okay. See, so, yeah, that's how old I am. I like, I'm like Matt Ryan is the quarterback for the Falcons. Like, that's like, you know, that's how old I am. Um, yeah. And then you said Gabriel Gonzalez. I feel like I've heard that name before. Is he for the? Is he for the Guardians? No, he's for the Mariners. 
for the Mariners. Okay. Um, yeah, he he has had a nice little rise this year for sure, and like his stats are awesome. But it, I don't know if it's the best time to get into, but his stats are pretty good, so mm-hmm. we'll see. And I watch him live, which also gives like a little sentimental value. Of course, no, no of course, because it's like yeah. you said, you see, yeah, like it's a West Coast, it's a West Coast thing. I understand that. Just like I love yeah. my Blue Jays, it's a it's an East Coast thing, um, and my Pirates yeah. for that matter. But I, you know, I want to I want to wrap up w- with with this one. Um, you know, I thought it was super cool when I met you at the National last year. You know, and you're like, I'm going to buy this Jordan Lawler card, and I'm like, you what? I'm like, Chris, the guy wants like 10k. I'm like, really? And I thought it was, it's super cool because I love that, like trying these things out, seeing how it goes. That one turned out well, and I think that yeah. taking risks it's it's part of the reason I want to have you in the show because I think it's fun. It's kind of the fun side of the hobby. Yeah, yeah you're gonna get killed sometimes, but yeah, as long as you're having fun. I, I totally agree. I mean, even if I do lose it all, which is probably more likely than it going to a billion dollars, it you still have a lot more fun and you also like learn lessons of like how markets work. Mm. I I think that's the biggest takeaway from the hobby. It's not really like I don't really see it as a business. I just see it more like a market, which if you learn markets better, you'll be better over, off overall. So we could summarize and I love that, Wyatt. So we could summarize by saying that even though you know, you, you've lost money along the way, or you've made money here, and you've lost some money there. You're saying that you've learned yeah. some lessons about how markets work. A hundred percent. Man, that is awesome. I, I call that like, and I'm 44, so it's a bit of an age gap with us, but I, I call that yeah. tuition, brother. I, I call it tuition. Yeah. Um, 100%. That's awesome. Great share. So I got to ask before we wrap up, are you still a Lawler guy? Because I get a lot of guys like Chris Lawler, Lawler, and he's playing better. Um, yeah, without that, like, just horrible horrible may he would be like like a 950 ops or something which is just insane i mean i think i talked to you about social media of like picking up a lower gold again which i would still be in i, I would still be up to do so i moved the lawler like a week ago or two just to mm-hmm. free up some cash but like if the right deal comes along i'll definitely pick up a lawler again because i still believe in him and it's like he might be in the show in 24 and the odds of him doing something are pretty likely yeah, I, I've been on record as saying I like Lawler, and it's somebody who I'll watch into the winter time to see if I get great values, yeah. especially up here in Canada. If people start to sell him because he's having a good season, but when you look at his numbers, like they're not crazy great. But that's because he they had don't a jump horrible, off the page. He had a horrible start to his season, so and I've called yeah. that looking under the hood. Like, let's really see what his season looks like. Um, yeah. So, anything else? Um, so, I'm going to end this way, and this is for viewers, maybe to pick up even more. I'm sure they're going to learn lots from hearing what you have to say, but if there's one thing that you could do over, say in the last two years with regards to the hobby, what's one thing that you would, you would do over or like, what's, is there one thing? I mean, at the start, when I got back into 2021, I would say not buying like Fernando Tati's first Bowen base card. That's probably the biggest thing. Cause like, I still got decent value for it, but it's just like, like, when you have a little more experience, you're like, that's just never going to work out ever. Especially like, I like, especially like in 2022, where it was just like the death of base cards, where it's like, you, you can't get into that stuff. I was so, I was so much better getting into J rod at the time, which I did a little bit. I've got some like nice autos of him and got a good profit on him, but I should never got into like those base cards of like stars, like Juan Soto or something. Those are probably just like, get, get, get rid of them for me. Why well, I think I, you know I love that brother because I raised my hand. I mean, I bought yeah. Tatis base, Juan Soto base, Franco base, and it was just you know I, I think that you and I had this conversation you know two years ago. You probably could have saved me a lot of money, so I hopefully people find some value in that. That's really honest, brother. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Why? Thank you so much for coming on the show, folks. This is Wyatt Zawadzki. You can follow him on Instagram. He is, you know, clearly a little bit more into football, but I know him as a baseball guy. I know him as the guy who I saw at the National last year who liked Lawler, bought a Lawler Gold for 10K, which I thought was, again, super cool. Um, you know, having fun in the hobby. Wyatt, thank you so much for coming on the show, uh, sharing some of your experiences. And um, yeah, brother, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. It's been a joy to be on.